Yes, well, yesterday, uh, Professor Lily Green and Professor John Hartley and I released a report titled Untangling the Net, which looks at the scope of content that will potentially be caught under Australia's new mandatory filtering scheme, which uh, has about a year before it's going to be brought in. Uh, and it's a report that looks in great detail at the public policy issues and the public law issues that are raised by the fairly broad scope of content that will be caught. Well, the internet's not a new medium. It's a completely new environment. Uh, and it's an environment in which media consumers have become media producers. So there are a lot of people who post material for very different reasons. We've got highly professional news and current affairs material. We've got therapeutic support groups. We've got social networking sites. Um, and when we're thinking about regulating and classifying a completely new environment, we really need to go back to first principles and ask what's appropriate and what's inappropriate rather than just cross-applying a very flawed, very inconsistent and very problematic media content regulation system that we currently have in Australia. Now, the problem is that the, the federal government is talking about using the refused classification category, a category developed with film in mind and applying that to this completely new media environment. The RC category as it stands is very broad. There's a lot of room for interpreting what goes into that category. Some of the worst kind of material that we absolutely want off our computer screens, like child pornography and bestiality, is certainly in that category. But there are much vaguer areas, like incitement to commit a crime. Um, so for instance, what about safe injecting sites that public health bodies all around the world put up to ensure that we limit the spread of HIV and that we limit overdoses among drug users. Uh, there's a whole lot of sexual material that would potentially go into the RC category because we have very restrictive laws about sexually explicit films in Australia. So what about a website in which young gay and lesbian or BDSM people talked about their, their sexuality and maybe shared stories about their sexual practices? A lot of that material could end up in RC. So we really need to understand that if you're talking about an environment as broad as the internet, there's a lot of material that could be caught that shouldn't be caught. Another good example was, would be a whole lot of political material that is of public interest but might involve graphic violence. So if we think about, let's say there's a protest, a student protest in Iran, um, and, and, and people protesting are beaten by police. Uh, now it might jump the R category in Australia and go straight into the RC category. But we would argue that this might be of public interest and that if someone's got this footage and put it on YouTube, people should know this is happening. A way that's open for the Minister, if he is insistent on going down this mandatory filtering route, is to say, you know what, I'm not using the RC category. That's inappropriate, it's too broad, it was designed with entertainment films in mind. Let's rethink this. Let's start by saying, here are the things we don't want on the net. Child pornography, bestiality, gross incitement to racism and violence. That kind of material, we'll circumscribe it, we'll define it, and we will keep the blacklist to that material. That's really simple. He could legislate for that. Well, there's only other two other liberal democracies that I'm aware of that have mandatory filtering. That's Germany and Italy. But in both cases, it's a very narrow category of material that's put on a blacklist and mandatorily filtered. That is child pornography and some gambling sites. If we look at the UK, which is a great example, they have a self-regulatory scheme with an independent non-government body uh, that oversees the blacklist. And it's basically confined to material like child pornography. There are others, other countries in which there's a co-regulatory scheme. Uh, but, but other countries who are comparable to us have shown you can have non-mandatory filtering and you can contain the category of material that's filtered. What, what can we do about child pornography? This is a very important question. The first thing we know, and the government acknowledges this, is that very little child pornography is on the web. Well, any that is on the web, yes, we should filter. That's important to do. Most of it is exchanged through peer-to-peer -peer networks and increasingly uh, malware bots are used to embed child pornography on often legitimate websites, uh, but it's not visible to the public. 
So what we need to do is, is have international cooperation around policing to detect child abuse, to detect the production of child abuse materials, dis distribution and consumption. It's a huge issue in the age of the internet um, and I think we need to devote more resources to solving this terrible problem.